Two of the following videos are true while the other one is trash. Can you spot the fake? Season 3 episode 8. Round 1, let's begin. First up, take a lighter like this and remove the plastic cap. Then grab a pen with ink, cut the tube, and add a small drop of ink to the nozzle of the lighter like this. Now when you light it, the flame appears to levitate by burning pretty far from the lighter, as you can see here, and stays burning as long as you keep holding it down. If you take a small cast iron pan and heat it up to about 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and then drop about 1 milliliter of water on it, it takes about 5.5 seconds for the water to completely evaporate. But if you do this again, except this time make the pan much hotter at around 400 degrees Celsius or 750 degrees Fahrenheit, adding the same amount of water will take less time to evaporate since the pan is much hotter, this time taking a little more than 4 seconds. If you take a chicken bone, this one's from a Costco chicken, you see that it's strong and I can't bend it with my fingers. But if you soak it in some vinegar for about a week, and then take it out and dry it off, the bone is now bendable. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. Did you think this levitating flame trick was fake? Well nice try, but this is legit, and is probably one of my favorite experiments that I've done in this entire series. The ink decreases the size of the nozzle, which means the butane shoots out at a faster speed. Fast enough that the flame doesn't propagate back to the opening like it normally would. It's pretty cool to see this up close, and I can even rotate my hand a bit as long as I keep the flow of butane. And here's what it looks like in slow motion in the dark. Soaking a chicken bone in vinegar for about a week also does make it bendy. That's because the vinegar dissolves the calcium in the bone. That means if you add the same amount of water to a much hotter pan, it actually won't evaporate faster, but rather will take much longer. This is due to the fact that the pan is so hot that the water is held up by a thin layer of water vapor that actually insulates the water from the heat of the pan. This is a demonstration of the Leidenfrost effect, and this water actually took about 2 minutes to fully evaporate. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. Next up, it's time for round two. This is a special nitinol paperclip. Nitinol, which is made of nickel titanium, is special in that it's a shape memory alloy. So if I bend it into a new shape, place it into a bowl, and then use a heat gun to warm it up, after a few seconds it will have returned to its original shape of being a paperclip. First take an empty cup and add some toothpaste. Then take some baking soda and add half of a teaspoon. Next take some sugar and add two teaspoons to the mixture. Lastly, add some water, it doesn't have to be distilled, that's just what I had, and after mixing it up, let it sit for a few moments and watch as these ingredients react together and it rises. Now you can dump it out and see that the water has been absorbed just like a diaper and it's quite clumpy as you can see here. If you take some hot but not boiling water and suck it up into a syringe that has a valve you can close, you can close the syringe and now once you pull on the syringe, the reduced pressure allows the water to boil, as you can see here. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. If you actually believe that heating this special nitinol paperclip would return it to its original shape, nice job because you'd be correct. Nitinol is real and does showcase the shape memory effect as you can see here. And reducing the pressure of hot water does allow the water to boil at a lower temperature since the boiling point of water decreases as pressure decreases. That means adding these ingredients together doesn't cause it to clump up like a diaper. Instead of sugar, I added a super absorbent diaper polymer to the sugar bag to make it look like it was sugar. This is what actually caused the water to be absorbed and make it clump up. If I had just added sugar, this wouldn't have happened. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. There's no bonus round or sponsor on this episode, but I wanted to remind you that if you're looking for a fun game or stocking stuffer gift, my Two Truths and Trash Science Trivia deck is available for purchase. It's almost sold out and I'm not sure if I'll get more available in time for the holidays, so make sure to get yours now before it's too late. If this is your first time seeing this, each of the 50 cards in this deck is a trivia round of Two Truths and Trash, where it's your job to spot which statement is false. Thanks so much for your support, and now on to the final round, round 3. If you take a block of round floral foam like this and drop it on an incline, it'll roll down. But if you take a heat gun and aim it towards the top of the foam block, the faster moving warm air causes the foam block to be pulled up the incline. If you take some flour and put it on a plate and try to light it, you'll see that it won't catch on fire. But if you put some in a strainer and sprinkle it onto an open flame, the small dusting of flour can produce large flames like this. First, pour a thin layer of water onto a plate and take a regular black piece of construction paper and submerge it in the water. 
Then add some clear nail polish to the water, lift the paper out and let it dry, and now the thin layer of clear nail polish creates a rainbow appearance on the surface of the paper like this. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. Using a strainer to sprinkle flour onto an open flame can produce large flames like this. The sprinkling of the flour gives it a larger surface area that's exposed to more oxygen, which allows it to combust more easily. A thin layer of clear nail polish on black construction paper also does leave a rainbow looking finish like this. That means this heat gun doesn't cause the object to roll uphill. I just added some fishing weights inside the foam and carefully positioned it so the weights were up high, meaning when I released it, the added weight falls down and to the right, rolling the foam up the incline. And there you have it, season three is now complete. I'd love your feedback on the new types of rounds I introduced this season, and I'm tentatively planning to make a fourth season, probably, but I've been doing this for about two and a half years now, and they're quite exhausting to make, so I'm gonna take a bit of a break from them to focus on some other one-off videos and my other series, Engineered Bets, so the season four premiere wouldn't be coming until sometime in 2025. Whether you just found this series or you've been here since the beginning, I really appreciate you, and I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you next time.